Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to the Jungle Brothers podcast. Today, Paulie and I are going to have a chat about conditioning, the specific part of your training that you may be doing too much of, or perhaps not enough. But we're going to go into where it sits within our philosophy on training and talk about why we think typically people lean too much into it and over, tend to overdo themselves on the conditioning side of things. As always, enjoy the show. Hey, if you dig it, make sure to share it with a friend. Take a screenshot, tell someone, shout it from the rooftops. Preach. Panavor Coffee haven't been featured as a sponsor for some time. Did I dial that down all right? Did a good job? Not bad. Not bad. Um, we haven't had Panavor on the show for ages because we haven't been doing the coffee thing while recording. But for the old listeners, the people who have been with us for a long time, they will know that Panavor has been the sponsor of the show for the longest time. Uh, our gym has a relationship with that cafe. It's not far around the corner. They do the absolute best sandwiches, the best coffee. And I'm very proud to announce that today... They are re-sponsoring the show. <laughs> the nature of the re-sponsorship came about because I said to Tree this morning, hey, we're podcasting, can you give me some coffee? And he said, of course. Like he says it to me every week, do you need coffee? And I'm like, no, 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 we're good. So happy to be sipping on the black coffee once again. Yeah, me too. And I love how he presented it to us. Um, the perfect amount of coffee with the water. The water comes with the ground coffee. And actually the Mocha Master that we use here for many, many years was actually one that he gave us as well. That's right. Yeah, and he doesn't he's he's he has an interesting philosophy with coffee whereby it's not he's very not complicated about it, but he's like, all you need to do is have the right amount of water, the right amount of coffee. So here's the water, here's the coffee. Don't do anything else. Just fucking mix it. You know? Mm -hmm. Um hey, let's talk about conditioning piece today. We we explore the training ethos at times. Um, this is something that we probably don't vocalize all that much, but I think it's, it's evident to the people who train in our gyms that they don't get flogged all the time. Mm -hmm. And my view, I'm not sure where you sit on this, but fitness industry in general these days tends to really lean into the flogging like for the majority of the time. Mm -hmm. You know, if we think about probably, I don't know, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, high intensity interval training wasn't really a term that was getting thrown around a lot. You know, CrossFit came about, it, it, it you, you know, brought metabolic conditioning as, as the, what it called conditioning work. Largely all the same shit, right? Um, but if we think back prior to that, you had like boot camps and stuff where really it was just about flogging you. And that mm -hmm. was kind of the thing, right? It was like, like I think a lot of these styles of training became uh, notorious because people would go so hard in the sessions. Mm. And because that was kind of novel, people would come back being, oh my God, we got fucking flogged. Mm. And it's like, oh my God, what did you guys do? And it's like, it creates a bit of a buzz, right? It's a bit exciting. Um, it's, I, I guess like, we think it's important, right? And then, and, and the, the, the purpose of this episode is to really go into like why we think it's important, but also where the, where the dosage of it becomes too much. Mm -hmm. um, have you like, I guess you came on the scene here at the gym sort of once we'd already established that philosophy. Yep. But have you had experience with like just that really gnarly kind of like all in on conditioning side of training? I would say not a great deal. Um, I've definitely done a bunch of killer workouts in my time, that's for sure. But I never went through that phase where I loved getting flogged all the time. And I guess what we're talking about is that hit type of flogging where like every session that you do in the week is just, you know, about leaving half of your body's water on the floor um, and just absolutely high-fiving and leaving the gym, you know, just defeated Oh, actually, feeling quite victorious by the end of it after climbing the mountain. Yeah, you um, survived death. You survived it, yeah. And, you know, it still, it does excite me from time to time now. I don't do a great deal now, but I never went through that full phase. But I know what you're talking about. It was slightly before my time, I suppose, when maybe you'd done a bunch of it and I kind of came in on the back of that. Um, so, yeah, like, it, it, 
well, we're going to unpack it just a bit more, but yeah, you know, I think it's it's a little bit like sport specific as well because there's different different ways in which you can flog yourself. I would say. I mean, absolutely right, but I think like for f- for the fitness industry at large, yeah, yeah, sure, it's never been particularly strategic about it. It's just yeah. like how do we make this as hard as possible? Yep, and that's going to be awesome. You know, it's like um, I think back to say one of the original Jungle Brothers, Betsy. Like he was famous for flogging. He, he called it beasting. He loved beasting people. <laughs> and so he just, and he would beast himself. He'd just <clears throat> do these grueling workouts that they just make you want to quit, you know? And that was his thing, you know? And so, yeah, it was, it was fun, right? Like I think back to the early days of when I first discovered CrossFit, I remember um, a mate of mine who went on to own who went on to open CrossFit Bondi, which he's since sold on. But he started um, just with a group of us. He'd be like, "Hey, I'm doing this thing. It's this website. They put a workout up every day. It's based on this and this. It's fucking hectic. You got to come give it a go." And so he'd like, "You remember Big G?" Yes, I do. Yeah. So they, Glenn, shout out. Um, so he'd take us down to the park at Bondi. We all mm. lived down at the beach. And he'd, he'd take us down and he'd have, you know, whatever, some kettlebells and a big fucking tire and there's the pull-up bar and, you know, some basic bits. And I, I remember like somewhere he'd be like, we're going to do a hundred of those and a hundred of those and a hundred of those and then we're going to run from here to fucking Clavelli or something, like the next beach, yep. you know, and then and you'd be like, righto. And I remember starting a workout with a hundred pull-ups and there was no like... It wasn't like, let me show you how to do a pull-up or let's... <laughs> like, you know, the kipping thing that we now... It wasn't a thing at that point, as far as I know. Maybe maybe <clears> it was. We just didn't know about it. But it was like... So, you know, you just like... You just you and someone else are just going set for set trying to accumulate 100 pull-ups. You just... You know, you're just dying, right? Mm-hmm. You're just so pumped full of blood. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, now we've got to do 100 push-ups and you just like... Like, again, upper body's just so pumped. And then it's like, now you got to flip the tire. And there's just... I'm like, getting excited, Jay. Oh, it was <laughs> super fun. It was so fun, you know? Yeah. Like imagine you're mid to late 20s in great shape. It's exactly the kind of workout you want to rip into. There's no, you know, you're not thinking about form. You're not thinking about skill development. <clears throat> you're just like, wow, I'm really pushing the limits of performance here, whether that's true or not. But, you know, that's how it feels. Um, but, I, I, you know, that was kind of my, my exposure. And I think... If for the for the few years around that, I was really dabbling in a lot of CrossFit stuff, and I did some like they still stick with me some really hectic workouts, mm. um, which were awesome. But flip side was I was then going to jujitsu that same day or the next day and flogging myself on the mats, just training as mm-hmm. hard as possible, mm-hmm. and it ended up becoming too much, right? Like you're like I'm just burning out here. Um, I guess we're going to go to maybe some, we can talk about some of the pros and cons a bit later, but is any of those workout specific ones that you can remember? Um, yeah, so, so that partially remember. Yeah. So that one I remember was just stations of a hundred, something like that. Um, I remember one that he, that he had us do, which I had, which I coached myself. I was like, that was a sick workout. It was, um, what was it? Three push Three push presses, four deadlifts, five burpees. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Seven minute AMRAP. So as many rounds as possible in seven minutes, mm-hmm. I think. Um, but the push press was 70 kilos. Deadlift had to be double that. So deadlift 140 and then five burpees. Um, that was fucking gnarly, right? How many rounds of that did you get? Oh, far, I can't remember. I can't remember. But that was like, I mean, the fact that it was like, this is the RX, this is the weight you got to do. Yep. And the deadlift has to be double whatever the push press is. You can dial back the push press, but deadlift. And so you're like, I don't know, something really neat and tidy about how it's all packaged up, right? Yep. yep. And that, that's something that I think CrossFit's really famous for. They make these fun, cool, kind of novel workouts where beyond the specific result of the session, the session itself is like a feature. Mm. And that's kind of that's kind of fun, right? Mm-hmm, as a participant, mm-hmm, definitely. Um, I'm trying to think back to any others. I remember I did actually a good one, fucking really good one, was when I went to the um, you may, you know the Mind Muscle guys. Yep. They had Raf and Lucky. Lucky. Yeah, they had an event at their old gym, 
it was the Functional Fitness Festival, I think, where <laughs> they basically had guests and recorded their podcast live and then, like, had an audience. Oh, yep. And there was a workout in the middle of it because it, it was like a full-day thing. There was a workout in the middle. They had a fella called um, Julien Pinot, I think his name was, who's a – I believe he's a French-Canadian dude. He created – he kind of popularized sandbags. Okay. At least in the CrossFit space and that was my first exposure to them. And we did this sandbag workout and they're like, hey, out of the car park, Julian's oh, going to run a sandbag workout. I remember that. Yeah. And I – and so they're like, so whoever wants to do the workout, um, you got to be out there like in two minutes kind of thing and it's going to start. And, every, you know, so was, I don't know, maybe 25 people doing it and then a bunch of other people came to watch. So we're out there and so we go out and they're like, hey, you're going to do this sandbag workout. Everyone's going to need a sandbag. So go into the gym and get a sandbag, bring it back. And um, people ran in, you know, grabbed sandbags. And I went in and the, the, there was just one bag left. So I was like, sweet, I'll grab that bag. I'm like, fuck me. I remember trying to get the bag from my hip, like onto my shoulder as I'm running back. I was the last <laughs> in the pack and I kind of couldn't get it to my shoulder. So I was like, oh, fuck, I'll just carry this thing. It's pretty heavy. And um, got there and they're like, here's the workout. <laughs> and I think, I think it was nine minutes. And they're like, we've got this length of car park. Yeah. And um, the car park here, the car park was probably... Uh, whatever 40 meters long and they're like you're going to start at this end of the car park timer goes pick up the bag perform five squats carry the bag to the end other end of the car park turn around perform five squats carry the bag repeat nine minutes don't put the bag down the goal is to not put the bag down for nine minutes jesus yeah and um of course they left you with the heaviest bag <laughs> yeah i don't i don't know if it was the heaviest <laughs> but it was fucking it was an 80 kilo bag god damn and um I, I was, it was like a, it was almost like an out of body experience. I didn't put the bag down. Mm. The th it was just, of just having that condition on it of don't put the bag down. And like, of course, if you had to, you know, and plenty of people did, fucking did. But it was like Soft. someone telling you, don't do this, you know? So like, don't stop, don't hurt yourself, but don't stop kind of thing. Mm. And, you know, of course, taps into like my brain where it's like fucking got to try and win this shit. Like, let's go. Of course. Um, that was great. It, you know, it was, uh, I wouldn't say that was like the most hard, it was, it wasn't the most hardcore like cardio thing, right? It was just this overall taxing, yep. heavy strength kind of thing. You're just kind of <coughs> carrying it at the front. Mm. I could rest because I could, I could catch rest because I've always had a, like a pretty good squat. I could sit the bag on my sort of lap, I could just you could squat lap it. down and lap it. Yep. And just rest in the squat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas yeah, I could, yeah. I noticed a lot of people weren't comfortable to do that, so they'd just have to drop it. But that was fucked. But you know, one of those workouts that's etched into my memory is that'll be there forever. And like I guess, you know, the way we've been talking about it for the last ten is it's kind of part of the reason why it's so appealing, you know, because you get kind of excited and it's that fuck, that's huge. I wonder if I could do it. Um, especially because you often, most people do it with other people. So it's like, hey, let's go all through. Let's, let's all do this and, and, and try and attack it. And, you know, it's that little daily dose of I either did it or fuck, I gave it a go and I feel amazing when I finish it. But, yeah. it, but it's a little Everest for that nine minutes or that 19 minutes. Um, and that's super addictive because of the, the, I guess, the, is that self-efficacy that you might feel in the day like you won that thing or you laid it all out for that time and fuck, I'm going to go and do the rest of my day after that. Yeah, I, I, would, I would think it's all of those things. Mm. I do think there's a very strong um, like hormonal response to yep. training that hard, like, in, like a release of endorphins and stuff, mm. which I really do kind of believe it's probably closely linked to you almost died and you survived. So how fucking good's that? Yeah, hell yeah. And everything's a bit brighter now. And that little, uh, I think, in, and I think of Betsy, it's, it's the, a lot of those, are, it's the mental um, kind of training that you're doing. It's like, I don't want to do it, but I'm going to do it. And I did it or I fucking gave it my best and I've gotten a little bit stronger at approaching difficult things. Yeah. And yeah. That, that's really addictive. Yeah. And that's the, and that's hugely positive for somebody to, to build, right? Like mm. that, that, that understanding of I can do hard things <coughs> mm. and my body can do hard things and mm. and I'll be okay like I'm okay with that discomfort yep and of course there are 
huge physiological benefits to that. Yeah. You know, uh, we, we don't need to go through them all, but just the ability to handle, you know, like the amount of fucking, I don't know, lactic acid and byproduct that's building up and your lungs are burning and it's, it's horrific, you know, physically and you get through it, surely there is great strength to multiple systems in the body that comes yep. from that. And, and like you said before, the pump, like just because you can get that hypertrophy effect just from the, the high loads of the high reps that you're doing, like you, get, you can get really jacked doing that shit. Yeah. Which is, you know, doubly good. Yeah, and you're not like, you're not going to go to the gym and go, you know, I'm going to do like five sets of 20 pull-ups today. Yeah, that's you're right. You're going to go in and do like four sets of 10 at mm-hmm. best. Mm-hmm. You know, but when someone says, yeah, I need you to do 100 pull-ups, they're like, all right, I'll do 100 pull-ups. And I'm going to put this fucking mix on. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Stay out of my way, dickhead. <laughs> Kabow, pow, pow. Um, yes. Yeah. So, yeah, so much benefit to it. And, like, mm. you know, we've talked about it in the martial arts context, right, that that's a huge, a huge facet of the combat training that mm. we are big proponents of mm-hmm. is that it pushes you into a lot of discomfort, mm-hmm. physical, mental, like, you know, emotional. Like, it's, it, 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 things get really hard and you have to learn to deal with that and that is one of the – greatest benefits that comes from that style of training you could probably cross over there and 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 less traditional you know industry conditioning and uh you've got martial arts specific for instance because there's all sports specific conditioning but fucking doing like shark tank or rounds that are designed for conditioning um and man that's that shit is really tough as well yeah um or it's fucking you're talking about 400s um, you know, running, sprinting, tr- like conditioning and just wanting to vom and stuff like that. Um, all very tough stuff, very addicting. But I guess if we were to start turning to, to kind of the cons of, say, only doing conditioning or doing way too much, um, potentially like doing too much conditioning while you're doing jiu-jitsu throughout the week and doing like doing jiu-jitsu conditioning and doing some, say, fitness conditioning on top of it like in the week you might be doing you know some harm there where you think you're doing good yeah so i suppose like there's obviously a huge recovery requirement Mm -hmm. when you're doing when you're pushing it to that end isn't there so for most people you're not going to be able to do that and then recover adequately to do it again the next day Mm -hmm. the other side of it though is that there is a uh, and and i suppose woven into that recovery piece is it's a stress like and everything's a stress on the body but there is a there is a it's very easy to cross the line from where that becomes a like a, a stimulus that is um giving your body reason to adapt to becoming a stimulus that's just breaking your body down mm. like now it is just stress in the most negative form and you are building up uh, more cortisol, you are not sleeping properly, your nervous system is jacked and you're now in this spot, like you are now chronically under-recovered. And I think that that's, I think that that's characteristic of a, of a lot of folks that get really hooked on that style of training. Mm-hmm. Um, so like you could say you get addicted to doing that and you want to do it four times a week or five times a week and, you know, 24 hours isn't always, depending on what the program is, enough for you to recover adequately without it just having those diminishing returns yeah and especially if you're like you're a bit underslept because you've got young kids or whatever you're busy at work you know you fucking had a couple of beers you know with dinner and you didn't sleep as good as you could like all those compounding factors Mm -hmm. you know sure if you are an elite athlete or you're a fucking competitive crossfitter and that's your main focus right you're probably recovering adequately but for for the for the everyday folk right um chances are they're not doing the best job of, of recovering across all fronts. But I, I guess the other side of that, and I, I feel like this is something that's not really acknowledged, at least it wasn't acknowledged then in that kind of simplified view of how do we make the body fitter and stronger. When you, when you put your foot on the gas like that and let it rip, you are deprioritizing the quality of your movement the um, the uh, the self awareness of uh, how's my form right now? Am I doing this well? Am I because it's not about that. It's just about like winning. 
or about going as fast as you can or getting as many reps as possible. It's like when you're, when you're playing football, you're not thinking about like, how's my running gait right now, right? You're just like, mm. get the fucking ball, like, like score the goal or, mm. you know, snap this dude, whatever. <laughs> so, and, that, and that, that's great. Like you can't focus on all those things at once. But if you're always training in a way where you're never focusing on what am I feeling right now? Is this squat good? How are my knees? Is I'm, fuck, can I get deeper on this? How can I do better? Mm-hmm then you're just fucking flogging yourself constantly. Yeah, how are you going to improve on your movement quality? That's right. Or say your strength, which we know requires a bit more kind of uh, intensity to be able to develop that. Um, so for sure, it's if you're only doing conditioning, yeah, what are you forfeiting there? And we know if, you, if you're looking kind of with any sort of long-term view, there's a lot of other aspects of physical health that you know need need to we need to pay dues to um like you know quality of movement you know uh, stability of your joints flexibility learning other movement patterns that are in deeper range of motion than usually when you're doing conditioning well it depends it always depends um on the program but um it lends itself to uh, simpler movements i would i would say so that you can go a little harder it should do right it like should. yeah not always mm. you know crossfit's copped a, bit, a lot of shit over i suppose or criticism over you know because they like to put sometimes very complex or highly intense movements into a conditioning piece right but yeah like that that would be always a consideration for us that for, con- for conditioning work it should be kind of simple movement patterns where not a large skill component you can just go hard but yeah that's right like you take the average group of people in a class here at the gym and i don't know would it be fair to say that 70% of them don't have an excellent squat. They might have a good squat or okay, but there's definitely going to be maybe a third of that class who their, squ- their squat needs some work. Mm-hmm. Knees don't look great down there. It's, mm-hmm. it's a bit tight. Range is lacking. Mm-hmm. So strength training, like slower, more deliberate training, four sets of 10, you know, let's hold this for two minutes, etc. That's the stuff that develops that. Mm-hmm. But if you say to that person, mate, I want fucking a hundred let's go (laughs) i'll give you a hundred shit ones that's all that's the you know Mm -hmm. and so i think that that's the that's where that's where where the fitness industry gets caught out because that person will have a huge smile if you tell them to like do a hundred now because it's a sick workout but you won't know about it in six months time when their their meniscus is ripped up and they're you know and their fucking lower back aches mm-hmm. and they're not at the gym anymore. Um, so they get rewarded in the moment for going really hard and you get reward too because you're like, yeah, I flogged everyone today, beasted them. But nothing changes and, and a lot of people just get worse. Whereas taking that time, focusing on the movement pattern, like you said, the quality, the efficiency, mm. that's the stuff that actually makes changes to people's bodies. And that's what then like almost gives them a license to let it rip on this one or this second conditioning workout we're going to do this week. And it will help you actually improve, you know, that workout if, if you know, that's your metric. Like it, you're going you're gonna to do it easier, I guess. Um, maybe apply yeah, yourself more effectively and then thus, yeah, everything else benefits. But so how much is, is enough then, say, for your average person or your average member at our gym? Look, I, you know, we know that most people, like on average, people get to the gym like three times a week. Mm-hmm. So for that person, I would say once a week is, is great to go hard. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the other two times, focus on moving well and getting strong and getting flexible. Yep. You know, and so we kind of have that like lift, lift the barbell, get strong, get powerful, body weight, get strong, learn a new skill, build flexibility. Mm-hmm. And then s and cool yeah bit of strength work and then let it rip Mm -hmm. and you know whatever body weight's got a little bit of that at the end right a little sprinkling of like ah 10 minutes you know yeah don't do them shit though like quality reps but like let's not rest now let's go you know so so you can you can do it that way uh but yeah i think that all out like let's throw caution to the wind and just get after it i mean saturdays are the the pinnacle of that session aren't they that's the yeah yeah the saturday partner workout yeah that's that's the big one on a, on a weekly basis and for all the 
the the reasons why we were grinning the whole time while talking about how gruesome some of the workouts you were doing in the, the day was like the people are addicted to that they love that saturday oh yeah and um you know it gets posted in the group every week and it's like oh fucking bah, <laughs> are you kidding me <laughs> yeah that's fucking impossible is he trying to kill us yeah it's always <laughs> that every week I mean that's that's the thing, isn't it? No one's like no one's like, oh, that four sets of eight reps you made me do of whatever that really got me. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like that. No one, no no coach is getting famous for dishing out like basic simple strength training <laughs> until they're hitting a PB. And yeah, it's just the one, you know. Yeah, but yeah, that that work and you know that I guess that yeah that that strength work there. Like I said before, it, it means that Saturday workout you can be the big boss there. You know, because you, you have the... You can be Doris. You can be Doris, basically. <laughs> and, and you can be just fucking leading from the front. Fuck, there it is. We're out. Thanks, fam. Choice.